Right, today I've got a few exercises to help you look after your long head of bicep tendon in your shoulder. And this is especially important for people who have either had shoulder surgery or have got a shoulder injury or bicep tendinopathies in their shoulder from previous injuries. Or even if you've got pain from pressing or doing things like front raises or shoulder press, then take a look at these exercises. Now, let's look at your anatomy a little bit beforehand. Remember, the long head of bicep, okay? Remember, your bicep is split into two sort of muscle groups. The short head comes up this side. The long head comes right up through the front of your shoulder. Now, that's gonna act as one, an anchor point for your arm for bicep curls, but two, as a big stabilizer for the front of the shoulder. And think of that as a, like a rope that's almost on a pulley system through the front of the shoulder, okay? And that helps keep that glenohumeral joint stable along with the rotator cuff and it attaches up into the labor. Now, when people have problems with this, you can get slap tears from the attaching up the top, all right? But also, this section here can become what we call tenopathic over time. If you get older, or you do a lot of heavy loading on that shoulder, this part of the tendon can get weaker and that can lead to a source of pain. So, this is also for people who've got tendinopathies in the shoulder just through time, age, doing weights, lifting heavy, to try and look after it, strengthen it up, stop the pain, and stop getting injured in the future. Now, first one I'm gonna work on, in, or the first two I'm gonna work on is strengthening. Now, what I like doing first up is actually doing what we call short lever loading for the tendon, because long lever this way is usually too hard for the tendon if it's got a bit of a problem. So this way here, this sort of stuff is usually too hard. So having a straight arm like a front raise is probably too difficult if you've got pain with this. So what I like doing is simply using a resistance band from behind. Remember the tendon's in the front, so you need a band from behind. And having your what we call a short lever. So meaning instead of being long at the arm, you're going to be short at the arm, basically flex the elbow joint. So your bicep is still on, okay? So you see, this is sort of like your anchor point here and then your bending point's sort of there. Think of when you're doing a bicep curl, this is like your anchor point and that's your bending point here. We're gonna do it the other way around. So that is now your anchor point and this is your bending point. So we are working the tendon section sort of here, going from this position sort of a neutral to flexion there. Now the load going backwards gives me a constant load in the front. Now it's not much, so what you might have to do is probably have two bands like that. Now I like having two long bands rather than two short bands because when you have a short band, when you get up to here, the lengthening isn't enough, so it's quite difficult when you get to the top and it's probably too much load. So what you want is a little bit more even load, which is a longer band, but have two of them. If you're very weak, obviously you go down to one. If you've got pain, you go down to one. But from this point, you can always walk forward, get a little bit more tension on this, okay? So find that midway point where you've got enough tension. Keep your palm that way, okay? So not this way, but palm up, and have the band a little bit wider than your elbow. And just think, you want to keep that shoulder back into that position, so you're setting it back. So the start of it's in a nice position. You do, certainly don't want it forward, because that's going to put a lot of tension through the front of the tendon here. We want that shoulder back in that position and then loading up forward to there, holding it, and then slowly down on the eccentric phase. When you get, to, until you get used to this, try and make sure that you're always resetting your shoulder like every rep, okay, when you go up. Because what tends to happen is people tend to start when they come down, roll their shoulder forward because that's what they're sort of used to. Maybe that's the way you've been damaging that tendon in the first place is letting that shoulder roll forward when you press. So just keep setting it back until you've got that perfect with your form, and that'll be your, like your first one. Now, that'll feel like you're loading up the front delt, a little bit of the bicep, but the front tendon is gonna work quite hard there, and it's a nice way of getting it warmed up and also getting some strength back in that tendon very carefully. Now, the second thing I like doing is some rotation work, because the tendon also works as a stabilizer for the front, helps to rotate a cuff out. Now, what I like people doing is doing an internal rotation this way, on their back using a dumbbell. Now, with this thing here, what you can try and work on is your shoulder position and your elbow position. So what you don't want to be is down in this position trying to do it, okay, at the bottom of a press. You don't want to be in that position because this is going to put a load, it's like a strain on that tendon at that point. Keeping it there all the time is going to irritate it. So keep your elbow at least straight out from the shoulder joint. If not, 
a little bit above to start with perhaps. So if you're one of these people who find that sort of load is a little bit too much, holding it there for a rep of 20, a rep of 12, then just come a little bit higher, all right? Now from that point, you're gonna keep your elbow in one position in the space. You're gonna rotate this one back. Now you've gotta be careful to start with because you may find if you've got bicep, long head of bicep tendon weakness or injury, you may find you've also got subscap or inter rotation weakness at the same time. They sort of come part and parcel. So doing this position here is not really a pec movement. You may find there's a little bit of pec work going on here, but most of it is trying to learn how to stabilize the front of the shoulder joint in this position here, getting that meter rotation strength a little bit better, which is gonna help you with that movement. Okay, so this is all leading to getting better with your press movement. Just make sure that this weight is not too heavy. So when you're going back, you're not sort of straining as you go back and you're not sort of letting that shoulder blade sort of shift in and out of position. You wanna try and keep your shoulder blade in one position and only move the dumbbell, it's keeping this at 90 degrees and only going back to what you're comfortable with. So this is four kilos. There's still quite a bit of load going through here. You just wanna make sure you don't strain it as you go backwards. And I would only go back as far as your shoulder can tolerate, okay? Don't try and go for heaps of range with this. Remember, sometimes when bicep tendons, long headed bicep tendons are weak, it makes the shoulder joint unstable. So you don't wanna be going and creating more and more and more range and make it more unstable. You wanna work on the range that you're okay with. As you get stronger, you can go further back into range. And just try and work on that to sort of the zero degrees. You won't really need to go forward on this one too much. Start from there and going back. Like I said, this is prepping you up for a bit of strength to push that way, all right? So when you get back into doing pressing work, that is improved a little more. And you'll find, what I find, people doing internal rotation work really helps their bicep tendon guts of it, the strength of it, to be able to press forward. So, next thing I want you working on is trying to improve. So that, well, think of those two as your tendon strengthening work. There's a whole lot of tendon strengthening work you can do. Those two are really great for the maintenance of that tendon in preparation for your pressing stuff. Now, I find people who have pain in their bicep tendon through pressing it, it's because they're either going too low with their elbow or they're letting their shoulder blade sort of go forward, which almost mimics the same thing. What I mean by that is, if you're one of these people who is pressing, whether it be bench press, whether it be chest press, dumbbell press, if you're going too low with your elbow, the load through that front end, the mechanical load th through there, may be just not quite right for you. Because if the load's really heavy down here and the elbow is far too down, to push forward from that position mechanically, that tendon has a really hard time. Remember, it's a thin tendon, it's not a big pec, okay? So wrapping it around the front of that glenohumeral joint and then loading it with a really heavy weight over time may be causing some of your pain you've got, the problem you've got. The other thing what happens with the press if you say you're not going down too far, but your shoulder blade is not retracting, okay? So when you're here and your shoulder blade is sitting forward, it's effectively doing the same thing, okay? So make sure when you come down, you are actually retracted. So to help you with that retraction, help you with that movement pattern, what I suggest you do is a scapular press. One, it's gonna help you with the serratus, which is always important for shoulders. But two, it's gonna teach you how you're supposed to be going back and forth with the shoulder blade when you do a chest press, bench press, that sort of thing. So you can afford to go heavy on this because you're not really gonna affect the bicep tendon too much with this sort of pressing movement. It's more about getting that shoulder blade position and repeating that shoulder blade movement to help you with the overall movement pattern quality when you return to pressing. So this is 12 kilos. So this position here, go for a straight arm in this position, rotate that bow externally, okay, so it's on the outside. In this position here, that bicep tendon's on, which is gonna give you an isometric load. But what you're trying to do is one, press that up, which is the top of that press movement, or chest press movement, and that's gonna help you with serratus here. When you come down, I want you to make sure that shoulder blade retracts and flattens onto the bench or the ground, whatever you're on, okay? So you're making sure, before you even went to that position, which you're not doing yet, before you even went to that chest press position, position you are, simply protracting as far as you can, and then letting it come down and retract right in that position. So you're learning before you go into a chest press movement that way, you are retracting this way. And the weight will help you guide you down. You just gotta feel back here, you'll feel that shoulder blade sort of go into the bench and then you've got to 
just let it come through right into full retraction. Then you're allowed to go down here. And obviously you've got to think now, where am I positioned here? Obviously you don't want to go too low, loading up the front of that bicep tendon. All right, so when you're doing chest presses, I would practice with a single arm in this sort of scapular press position and doing reps like that before your chest press movement. So you're really trying to fire up neuromuscularly what you're supposed to do when you come down here. Okay, you're supposed to have that shoulder back, not pop forward. So that's a really nice one to do. Just don't go too heavy on that, otherwise you won't be able to control the press movement, especially if your serratus is weak. Going too heavy on that, thinking you're gonna get stronger, it's gonna to be too hard because you won't be able to get the movement right, all right? So that's a really important one to work on. The other thing I like working on pre-pressing is working on extension of the shoulder. So this one you can actually get your bands back. Again, I would go double bands with this, around something like that, okay? If you're weak, go to single, okay? But the double band is gonna be really effective for strengthening. Um, if I'm gonna show you my right shoulder, what you wanna work on is trying again, this is gonna help you with your retraction part, is retracting here and then coming into extension there. Now I've shown this exercise quite a few times before for things like label tears. Now think of the bicep tendon, goes into your labrum, okay? So this is the same sort of drill. We're trying to switch on and pump up muscle tissue at the back and help you with the strength back there. So when your arm goes through this range or going backwards in any sort of row or the eccentric phase of a chest press, you're learning to keep muscles working eccentrically at the back there to control that ball and keep it back in the socket. And they basically help out the front, all right? So think of like, if you're pressing forward and you have no strength in the back here, that ball is just gonna launch forward, okay? And put a lot of pressure on the bicep tendon, all right? Same thing when you come backwards. If you don't have that strength there, it's not gonna pull it correctly. So I would definitely work on your extension, which gives you that rhomboid strength at the back there, so the pulling strength back, but mostly the posterior part of that arm, namely your rear delt, your tricep, and a bit of rotator cuff when you pull backwards. So think when you do this, shoulder blade, straight arm past your hip, return and back. Now this is a really good one for that neuromuscular people out there who want to learn good shoulder technique. Make sure you watch this. If I pull backwards, I'm not allowed to let my shoulder go forward. That's one of the biggest mistakes, okay? So you gotta go, okay, shoulder blade back. As I pull back, keep my shoulder back. And then as I return, keep my shoulder back and then let the whole thing roll forward, okay? Now, those ones in combination with your front one are gonna be a really nice little superset before you do your pressing. So think your front sprinter one, your extensions, prep you up before you do any sort of pressing movement. The kettlebell press in the air presses you forward to help you with that movement, that neuromuscular movement. And this one here, the internal rotation one, helps you with that overall strength pushing forward. Give those four a crack. Hope your bicep tendon feels better.